Hi friends, this is Kim. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm a daughter of someone with Parkinson's disease. Many of you know that I lost my mom last year to Parkinson's and I've committed to continuing these videos in her honor to help everyone I can who's living with the disease or loving and caring for someone who is. I recently received a message from one of my subscribers asking if I knew anything about any current clinical trials going on for Parkinson's disease. Well, I didn't, but instead I did some research for him and thought you might all be interested too. So I created this video with, the in with all the information that I collected. Today, I'm going to be sharing six of the most promising Parkinson's clinical trials happening right now in the United States. There are more, but these were the six that I um, thought were the most promising, in my opinion. These are studies testing new treatments, things like pills, gene therapies, and even cell transplants that researchers hope may slow or even change the course of this disease. But before we dive into those details, let's quickly talk about what a clinical trial is, why the U.S. requires them, and what it means when you hear phase one, phase two, or phase three. Okay, a clinical trial is simply a research study where doctors and scientists test a new treatment on people. The goal is to find out, is it safe? Does it work? And does it help enough people that it should become widely available? In the United States, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, requires these trials before any new treatment can be approved. This protects patients from unsafe or unproven treatments. So every drug, every surgery, every therapy you see on the market today had to go through this process. You'll often hear phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. Here's what those mean in plain English. Phase one, this is the very first test in humans. It's a small group, usually just 20 to 100 people. The main question they're trying to solve in a phase one clinical trial is, is it safe? Now, if phase one looks good, we move on to phase two. We move to a larger group, maybe a few hundred people, and now we're asking, does it seem to help symptoms while still being safe? Phase three, this is the big test. Hundreds or even thousands of people, often across many clinics and hospitals. Researchers compare the new treatment to placebo or standard treatment. If this stage goes well, the company can apply for FDA approval. Now, phase four is done after a treatment is already approved to keep tracking safety and long-term benefits and risks. Okay, so in short, phase one, is it safe? Phase two, does it help? Phase three, let's prove it. Phase four, track it long term. Okay, now you know what a clinical trial is and the process used. Let's look at six trials in the United States that researchers are really watching closely right now. Trial number one, Bemdanapracil. I have no idea if I said that right. It's up there on the screen. BRT-DA01. These are lab-made dopamine cells. This one is cell replacement therapy. Scientists grow new dopamine-making cells in a lab. Then doctors surgically place them into the brain. The hope is to replace some of the dopamine cells that Parkinson's disease has destroyed and improve movement for the patient. This trial is in phase three now, which is the big test. It's already passed phase one and phase two. Participants are usually people between the ages of 45 and 75 years old, who've had Parkinson's for between four and 12 years and still respond to levodopa, but have a lot of off time. Off time is when the medication stops working prior to the time of the next dose. I did a whole video on off time. Um, if you would like to learn more about that, I'll put a link to that above here. Okay, because the cells 
in this trial come from a donor, patients will need temporary immune suppressing drugs. Why is this study exciting? Well, in earlier studies, the cells survived and looked promising, which is why the bigger trial is happening now. So that's one. Now this is the second trial, AB1005, GDNF gene therapy. So this is about feeding dopamine cells. AB1005 delivers GDNF, which stands for glial cell line-derived neurotropic factor. Okay, so let's just call it GDNF, that's easier. <laughs> this is a one-time gene therapy. Surgeons place a gene package directly into the brain's putamen. That package tells the brain cells to make GDNF, which is a natural growth factor that helps dopamine cells survive. This one's currently in phase two. It includes a sham surgery group, pretend surgery, for comparison. Patients are usually between 45 and 75 years old, and they've had Parkinson's, for between four to 10 years. And these patients are already dealing with motor fluctuations. Why is this one exciting? A smaller study showed the therapy was safe and had encouraging results. The FDA even gave it RMAT status, Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy Designation. That means that the FDA helps speed up development because the early results looked so promising. So that's one to watch. The next clinical trial is trial number three, PR001, PREVAIL, and it's by Eli Lilly. Gene therapy for the GBA1 Parkinson's patients. Um, it's also called LY388-4961. This trial is for people with a genetic form of Parkinson's linked to the GBA1 gene. I think you would probably know if you had this, but maybe not. Uh, GBA stands for glucocerebrosidase. Maybe. It's up on the screen so you can read it yourself. Uh, doctors deliver a healthy copy of the GBA1 gene into the brain fluid space at the base of the skull, called the cisterna magna. It's in phase 1, 2A, so it's still early. Patients are adults, usually between the ages of 35 and 80 years old, who carry the GBA1 mutation and already have more advanced Parkinson's disease. Why is this one exciting? Because it's one of the first therapies that goes after a specific genetic cause of Parkinson's. If you haven't been tested, maybe you should ask your neurologist. Um, I don't know when they do the test to see if you have this mutation. My mom was never tested. Um, I'm not sure if you have certain um, criteria that the doctors see before they do that test. I don't know. Anyways, something to talk to your doctor about. Okay, the next one, trial number four, BIIB122, also called DNL151. This is a daily pill tar targeting LRRK2. Um... LRRK2 stands for leucine rich repeat kinase 2. This is a pill, not surgery. It blocks the LRRK2 protein, which is too active in some Parkinson's, especially in people with the LRRK2 mutation. Once again, I don't know how they test for that or when they test for that. My mom was never tested. Um, there are two main trials in this one trial. The first one is LUMA, and that's in phase 2B. This is for early Parkinson's, uh, those in age group of 30 to 80 years old. It tests whether the pill slows down worsening of the disease symptoms. Now, BEACON is the other trial in this main trial. Uh, it's in phase 2A. This is focused just on people with the LRRK2 mutation. Why is this exciting? If it works, it could be one of the first genetically targeted pills for Parkinson's disease. Trial five, ANPD001, 
this is a basically your own cells reprogrammed, which sounds kind of exciting to me. Um, doctors take your own cells, like skin cells, reprogram them into dopamine cells, and put them back in your brain. It's in phase 1, 2A, so still early. The participants are usually between 50 and 70 years old with moderate to advanced Parkinson's disease. Because the cells are your own, there are no immune suppressing drugs needed. Why is this exciting? Early reports showed it was safe and patients saw encouraging improvements. This is truly personalized medicine. Okay, this is trial number six. IKT 148009, also called Rizvodenib. It blocks the C able, a type of enzyme linked to Parkinson's changes. So this is a pill that blocks the C able. Uh, it's another oral pill, like I said, designed to block a pathway scientists believe contributes to the buildup of alpha synuclein, the sticky protein that's in Parkinson's disease. This trial is in phase two and includes people who are newly diagnosed and not yet on Parkinson's medications. The study is testing whether this pill can slow disease progression, not just treat symptoms. Why is this exciting? Um, if it works, it could be a simple daily pill that slows Parkinson's disease, which I think is fantastic. How do you find trials near you? If you're wondering how to get more info or how to join a clinical trial, here's what you need to do. If you're wondering, could I or my loved one join a trial? First, you need to talk to your neurologist. Bring the trial's NCT number. That's the ID number on clinicaltrials.gov. I'm gonna leave all this information in the description so you don't have to write any of this down. Um, you could check out the Fox Trial Finder or search directly on clinicaltrials.gov. Most of the information I found was from the clinicaltrials.gov website. Now, I encourage you to really read the details carefully. Look at the age ranges, years since diagnosis, and whether you meet the inclusion criteria. If you don't meet the criteria, they're not gonna let you do it. So don't get your hopes up if you don't meet, if you don't meet the basic criteria. And see what is required of the patient for the trial. Where do you need to go? How often are the visits? Will they help with any travel costs, etc.? Let me share a quick story and why I think that last section is so important. I have, a friend, uh, I have a friend whose husband had a brain tumor. I know this is not Parkinson's, but uh, it's another serious condition. He was accepted into a clinical trial, and he and his wife were so excited. The catch was that the trial site was in Texas. We live in Southern California. They had to fly back and forth many times. Not only was it very expensive, but it's hard to travel when you don't feel well. Um, it was hard on both of them. In the end, the trial didn't work for him, which was heartbreaking. And his wife later said that she wished she hadn't spent so much time and money traveling and instead spent that time together doing fun things. Now, obviously, if it would have worked, it would have been worthwhile. But there's no guarantees. So just keep that in mind. And that's why my suggestion is this. Try to find trials that are close to where you live or ones that don't require constant travel. It can make the whole experience easier on both the patient and the caregiver. Like I said be, um, earlier, I've listed all the clinical trials that I spoke about in the description below and links to them. And I've also put it in a pinned comment at the top. So you can look into those trials that I talked about, or maybe you'll find some others that interest you on the clinicaltrials.gov website. So that was six of the most promising Parkinson's trials happening in the United States right now that, in my opinion, were very exciting. Remember, clinical trials don't guarantee success. Even promising treatments can fail. But every trial moves us closer to answers, and it gives families like ours hopes for the future. I'll keep watching these studies and looking for new ones and share updates in plain English as they come around. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. 
And as always, talk to your own doctor before making any medical de- decisions about a trial or any treatments. I am not a medical professional. I am just a regular person. I appreciate you listening. Um, I hope that you stay healthy. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.